free parent next. And Mr. Parent will be followed by Dave Luboiski. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Council, Vice Chairman. Oh. Uh, genetic modification and biosafety are concepts that have not been well understood by or accessible to the non-geneticists working in the fields of conservation science, law, administration, and management. Um, the biodiversity debate is at the forefront of a larger question on how humanity can, in an integrated and congruent way, address the larger, excuse me, you guys should have a detailed analysis. I encourage you to, to look over this. Um, I work with COIC Research, and uh, I work closely with the scientists. And uh, uh, concerning the biodiversity debate, it's important to understand the larger question on how humanity in an integrated and congruent way can address human livelihoods while at the same time fulfilling its international mandates to conserve and sustainably use the environment. Um, in Hawaii, this is especially important that we address these concerns given the great sensitivity of our present ecology and the already vulnerable state of our present environment and ecosystems. Uh, these questions are among the most critical concerning Hawaii Ne. Inherent in our aim should be the desire to create systems that are ecologically sound as well as economically viable, which do not exploit, pollute, and are sustainable for the long term. We find many claims about genetically modified organisms that they can be a basis for increasing food production without the need to convert more land for cultivation, for example. These claims, however, are are countered by the claims that GMOs have a variety of critical impacts on people and animals and especially ecosystems and lands not under cultivation. Uh, in order to determine the focus for decision making in this area, however, we must provide a definite statement regarding the controversial scientific issues and development and a more detailed collective understanding of the scientific controversy and how it affects um, our islands in particular. Uh, this, this is not uh, in, intended to move beyond the basic formulation of the problem, but in, within my detailed analysis you will find uh, that uh, there are some critical changes, uh, particularly uh, the, uh, in, the 19, in, the, in the beginnings of the major change in this process came into being in the 1950s when James Watson and Francis Kirk discovered the structure of DNA, this is important, the double helix nucleotides. They then postulated that nucleotides formed the blueprint of life, and by the 1970s it became possible to isolate individual genes and refashion them and copy them uh, in cells. Uh, it should be known, and, and the council members and the people present here, it's very important uh, that the restructuring and formation of cells on the molecular level is an act of human invasion on other life forms. And just like uh, any invasion of another invasive species, it has internal and external negative effects. Uh, this must be measured. Uh, in this connection, the decision makers are already, uh, you know, you guys are briefed on this, but as a part of the ongoing concern to protect the environment and the right of every citizen to live healthy, uh, and to have, uh, given the uncertainties, the scientific uncertainties as to the consequences of the use of GMOs, is it recommended that it is recommended that the policy and committee, its members and non-members, frame and harmonize in the fields of public information, consultation, and participation regarding the future of GMOs, and establish labeling guidelines where the production of and use of GMOs um, are concerned on our islands. Thank you, Mr. Parent. We thank you. If uh, you wish, and that is part of your testimony, if you wish, you may submit that written. Oh, uh, thank document you. that you uh, have worked hard on, and you can submit that to the committee staff, and uh, we'll be happy to I appreciate distribute it to other committee members. For thank you. you. I, I've, I've supplied uh, 16 copies, and I thank you for your time. If, if at this time there's any questions, I, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions. Any questions for the I work with the University of Hawaii. I work closely with the scientists, and if there are questions, I would encourage them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Parent. We thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Mr. Dave. Luboski, Luboski. I'm sorry if I'm mis mispronouncing your name. Good morning. Good morning. Um, right, my name is Dave Luboski. I'm a co-farm manager at Lokalani Ohana in Waihe'e, which is an initiative to uh, provide a place for people with disabilities to live and work. And we've got an organic garden. Um, I've worked in organic gardens for... 10, 12 years, and the issue of GMOs has come up again and again, and uh, obviously there's a lot of concern about it, and uh, there's also lots of people who think it's a good thing. Um, now, um, back in 99, there was a book published called Trojan Seeds, which explains a lot of the issues behind GMO. 
just touch on a couple points which I think might be relevant. Um, first off, back in the 90s, there was a tremendous amount of PR done by GMO firms such as Monsanto to squelch any news report such as, you know, there were people working for Fox News getting fired for trying to do stories on GMO. Consumers who were complaining about uh, health problems after eating certain fast food products were basically ignored. And to me, you know, that points to there's something that it seems like they don't want you to know. And if GMOs are such a great thing, well, you know, why is there something to hide? Secondly, there's um, something about how organisms are actually modified. And, you know, you might imagine some intricate, exact process going on. And this is at least how it was done ten years ago. You have a vat of cells in a solution that are going to be modified. Then you have the gene that's going to be... Uh, put into that cell, and the, the, the genes are shot into this vat full of cells, and there is an antibiotic resistance that is shot into the cells with the gene. Afterwards, there is an antibiotic put into that vat, so the only cells that survive are the ones that were successfully manipulated because they are antibiotic resistance, resistant as well. Um, it's not an exact process. You don't know where in the DNA that uh, modification is taking place. It's just a shot in the dark or a shot in the vat. It's not an exact process, and you don't really know what's being affected. Thirdly, there's now these super weeds, which are Roundup resistant, which is just one other thing that's happening today. There's all these weeds which don't even die to Roundup. So there's a lot of problems here. We need to look at it really closely, but I support the labeling. We have the right to know for our own health as well. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts to the committee this morning. Any questions for the gentleman?